Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP. Welcome back to another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough with the Austin P. Governors. We're down to the final game of the season, and man, since the last episode, it's been a really, really tough stretch. Um, we're at 14 and 14, 8 and 9 in the conference. Our last game is going to be on the road against Belmont. Don't foresee us winning. You can see our, our assistant coach who scouted this game thinks Belmont's got a pretty good chance of winning. They beat us earlier. Pretty close game, but they beat us earlier uh, at home. So it would be a really big upset, I think, if we won. Uh, but what I'm going to do this episode before we play out that game, I'm going to look at how we've done, uh, hit up some highlights and just some summary of, of our team thought I might look at the rest of the uh, NCAA this episode, give you an idea of what the uh, some of the other big big name conferences are looking like and how the ratings are, are, uh, or the rankings are looking going into some of the conference tournaments. Uh, but uh, I'll start off with just going through the games we've had since that last, uh, I think the last episode was that win against Tennessee State, which was really one of the highlights of the year. We played really well against them. And then I'd almost count this Eastern Kentucky game as a highlight. Um, on the road, really big underdogs. We forced it to uh, OT and just could not put it together. They barely beat us 91-90. to 90. And uh, once again, McKinnis led the way in scoring with 21 points. He's been playing really well this whole time. Uh, but I thought that was positive enough. I didn't expect to win that one. I thought, well, hey, that's a good sign if we're going to be playing that well. We came up against SIU Edwardsville at home, beat them pretty easily, 79-71. And then Eastern Illinois on the road, another one of those teams we weren't expected to win against. Uh, we lost 71-85. But then... This is probably uh, the roller coaster we've been on. I would say this was the most disappointing loss of the year. Moorhead State at home, I think we were about a 50-50. They were, may have had just a slim advantage in scouting in this game. And we could not put them away, which has been a, kind of a sign of the times uh, for us. And they kept... Um, just kept pushing us and pushing us, and we wound up going to double overtime in this game and just collapsed at the end. They they pulled away 106 to 100. Um, we had good scoring from some guys. McKinnis wasn't his best game at 15. Holland had a good game. Some bench play here from some guys like Ivory. He had a great game, but um, just a very disappointing way to end our home season, you know, the last uh, game of the year at home. Um, that would have assured us of that 15-win mark, which is what our goal is from the board. Just everything about this one was disappointing. And so now it, it leads us to that big final game against um, Belmont. And as always, you know, they're tough this year. They're not the team they were last year, but it's going to be very tough to beat them. Before I look at the standings, just to sh show you how the team's doing, I haven't really changed too much uh, in terms of the depth chart since that last episode. I think I went over how I'm giving McKinnis more time at shooting guard. I'm giving um, McMillian and Ivory more time at point guard. Um, Ivory's still not totally happy with me, but it's it's improving a little bit. And he's had some games here and there where he's looked okay. Again, that game against uh, Moorhead State, wasn't too bad from a scoring um, scoring consideration, I guess. But before that, the previous few games haven't been that great from him. Uh, you'd have to go back to that Tennessee State game. We won. Uh, that was one of his better performances, I guess, <clears throat> of the second half of the season. And then if I look at McMillian, uh, well, Cunningham's a starter. He's not doing too great. Uh, McMillian has played a little bit better. I think he's... Um, Coming off a pretty decent game in that loss to Eastern Illinois. Well, uh, let me scroll down. Eastern Illinois, that was a pretty good game for him. He he got some good play time against uh, Moorhead State. Looked decent, uh, but considering that play time, I mean, only uh, through two assists, just three points. 
I'd still like to see a little bit better from him. But I'm hoping that both he and Ivory are going to pick up some ratings going into next season, and maybe one of them will have a better chance at starting out right. McMillian will be a sophomore. Ivory will be a junior. Um, and Cunningham, um, I think Cunningham is also going to be around. He's still a junior, but uh, he's he's really – not who I want starting at point guard for sure right now. Looking at the stats, just the leading scorers for the team, it's still driven by McKinnis. He's looking even better. He's up to 16.3 points a game. Jepson has had some good games here of late. Uh, his point totals are up there. He's going to be a senior next year, so having him back will be a, a big plus. He's been in double-digit scoring for, what, six of the last seven games, had 21 points in that win against SIU Edwardsville, uh, so I'm, I'm happy with his play. I'm even really happy with Holland, uh, just a two-and-a-half star potential center. Um, he's dividing the time with um, with Mallet backing up, and he's getting, you know, what, 23 minutes a game? Um, considering that, he's doing pretty well. There has been, there have been some games here. I think uh, the Tennessee State game, was his best game of his career, really. But he looked good against Moorhead State uh, as well. Um, even Eastern Illinois, he, he got a lot of rebounds for us. Um, had three blocks in that Moorhead State game. So he's been okay. I know I've still got that one recruit, center recruit, uh, that should be coming on next year. So that would give us three at the center position. Um, at least it would give us more depth. I mean, when we get past Holland and Mallet, it's really tough. Mallet... Just a freshman. I really hope that his playtime um, is going to see some improvement in his ratings. I mean, the guy's 6'10", 235, you know, really good size, I think, for a center in this conference. If he gets some rating progression over in the offseason, he, he'll still be a good backup, may compete for the starting role next year. Uh, so that's been positive. And Greg Laws has also... Um, Ben um, continues to be pretty positive as well. Uh, he's a three-star potential now. He's getting really most of the play time, I think. Um, although he, I think he got into foul trouble early. Yeah, he got into foul trouble against Moorhead State. But when he plays um, a decent amount of minutes, he's still a better overall player than uh, Edwards, who is um, one of the few starters we're going to be losing. I also have... In recruits, um, I also have Ike King, not a very heavily rated uh, power forward, but he still favors us. I've given him a, a given him a scholarship offer. He looks like he gets a lot of rebounds. Uh, these, I think, these are his stats from this season in high school. Not a great score, but he is well. He is rated pretty good at inside and outside shooting. Um, Good passing, too, so I, that's something we struggle with at power forward, so that'd be nice to see. But that's how the team looks. Looking at the standings in the OBC, it's really uh, a lot different. And, and honestly, you know, Belmont, they're 10-7 and 7 in conference, so they're not running away with it. They had a great um, out-of-conference schedule. They're already at 20 wins. I mean, I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could surprise and win. I don't know how the conference goes if every team um, is qualifies for the conference uh, tournament. I hope so. Uh, that would give us at least another opportunity to pick up that 15 wins if we don't get it here against Belmont. But you can see Southeast Missouri State didn't see them winning the regular season, and, and, and it looks like they're going to have a good chance. Same with Tennessee Tech, although one of my uh, viewers pointed out, and it's true, uh, when I looked at the, this team um, either last episode or a couple episodes ago, they have a really good balanced team in terms of the ratings. They do have a couple of injuries here. Um, it looks like Julius Mason is out uh yeah, he's out, period. He's he's not going to be playing anymore um, for the rest of the season. And then they have this guy. He's out as well, but he's a transfer, Greg Harris. A uh, good player here from, from him, and he's not uh, he's not getting any 
I guess he's not going to be playing until next year. That's what it is. So they may be a competitive team here uh, next year as well. So uh, I think some of these guys were seniors, but some of I'm seeing point guard. Uh, they've got a senior who's going to be going, and a shooting guard, a senior is going to be going, but they got a three star to fill in for him. I mean, you know, they, they've got good depth. So I'm surprised to see them up there, but uh, maybe it's not too uh, unexpected that they would be up there. Eastern Kentucky, um, they're about where we are, honestly. They're probably outperforming their talent level, um, having a really good season. And then just to round it out here, I'll look at Belmont. They're um, they're not as strong as they have been in the past, but you got four four star players at point guard, power forward, center, and that's uh, that's something I wish we had. You know, three four star uh, starters. So we'll we'll get to that um, game here in a minute. But I thought I would look at the the standings, the rankings. Um, before we move on, once again, Cincinnati, who we lost to early in the season, they have been first or second just about every week this season. <clears throat> They're already up to 30 wins. Arizona up to 30 wins as well. So you're seeing Cincinnati, Kentucky, Arizona, Gonzaga, Louisville. Uh, it's a pretty uh, North Carolina. It's a pretty um, common names on that uh, on this board. Marquette, maybe they're they're new uh pittsburgh michigan's way down 25 and then uh, the coaches poll has arizona over cincinnati but then uh rpi i think the best team we have in the rpi is probably still going to be belmont even though uh they're what third in the conference they do have a a better out of conference record and that's probably helped them out their win win loss percentage is better than any other team in the conference um bubble watch right now they're going to probably say whoever's leading uh from the from the ovc they're going to make the uh, tournament but let me see who that would be is it eastern kentucky still i know we just looked at it but um Southeast Missouri State, sorry. So on the bubble watch, it's probably just going to be if there's any other team outside of, uh, of well, where, where are they? They should be here somewhere. Um, I'm going to just overlook at them. Okay, usually you got the the ones who are rated. I mean, Belmont, they're fourth in the, on the bubble watch. Um, wow, that's crazy. I don't see our conference here. Who on who's in? That doesn't make sense. Wow, that really doesn't make any sense. Well, regardless, I mean, whoever wins the conference tournament is going to get an invite to the to the Final Four tournament. So why they're not showing up there, I'm not sure. Uh, but looking at standings, um, let's see. We'll, we'll start out maybe at the top, look at a few, like the uh, American Ath- Athletic Association. So you got three teams there, Memphis Tigers, Fourth with 10 wins in conference, but just 16. I don't see any teams there on the bubble outside of the first to top three. Uh, Atlantic Coast, North Carolina, Louisville, Pittsburgh, Wake Forest, Virginia, Duke. Duke not having a dominating year, but they're still probably going to make the tournament. Syracuse, and then after that, that's probably it. Um, Florida State really struggling this year, 6-14 and 14 in conference. And then Big 12, we got Kansas. Uh, West Virginia having a good year, Kansas State, Iowa State. Those two, those two are probably on the bubble, depending on how the tournament turns out. Uh, then we got Big East, 
Marquette, Villanova, Georgetown having a good year, 21 and 10. I would think they would have a chance at uh, making the tournament. Seton Hall, Providence, no, nah, they're not doing too great. Let's see who else is a big. Uh, I think this Big West have no. Um, well, Big Ten. We got Iowa, Michigan, Maryland, Michigan State. You got six teams right there in the top 25 from the Big Ten. And then Purdue and Illinois. Uh, with outside chances at making the tournament. We got Pac-12, just one team from the Pac-12. I remember growing up, this was a, uh, one of those conferences that just dominated in basketball. You know, you may have a couple teams like Oregon, uh, Washington, UCLA may make it with, um, well, Arizona State has a good chance if they have a good run in the in the. In the turn, their conference tournament, they're, they've got a 34th ranking in, in RPI. But I remember when I was a kid, the Pac-12 was just such a big conference. It just it doesn't seem to be that way anymore. Uh, in the SEC, you've got Kentucky having a great season. They've been in that top three or four all year. Arkansas, who was a good team last year uh, in this playthrough, they're having another good year. Tennessee, same way. Florida. Uh, Vanderbilt, Auburn, Georgia, they may have an outside chance to make the tournament. Um, and then you got the West Coast with Gonzaga. Outside of Gonzaga, I mean, there's St. Mary's having a good year, but I don't know who outside of this uh, Gonzaga would make it from here. And then let's see if there's another one, Western Athletic. No. I think I covered pretty much uh, some of the bigger ones. Hopefully, if there's a conference you're interested in seeing, um, you can just let me know in the comments. But let's go ahead and get started on this game. And the first thing I want to do before I call it up, I'm going to look at the individually uh, the scouting report, see how they rank us. So I've seen us rank worse against Belmont. So they've got shooting guard, small forward. And bench is where we have the advantage. Uh, they have the advantage of point guard and center and power forward. So I think I'm going to go favoring outside right off the bat. Um, I may up the defensive intensity a little bit starting off uh, until we get in foul trouble. Foul trouble has been really a common theme all year. Just about every game we get in foul trouble early. Um, like always, I, I, I slow the pace down a little bit to start. I want to crash the boards a little bit harder, both defensively and offensively. And we're going to favor outside. And let's see how that uh, how we st start out. And right off the bat, we got a turnover. McKinnis threw it away, but they repay the favor. McKinnis misses his first attempt. They they have a turnover. And McKinnis draws a foul, goes to the line. He's a pretty decent free throw shooter, so we score first two points from McKinnis. Uh, sloppy play so far, and it's a 2-2. And they get the first, well, there are two fouls on him already. Um, man, nobody except McKinnis is really shooting, so finally uh, Jepson. Man, we're up 6-2. Seems like we're doing pretty good with the rebounds so far. Up 8-2. Jepson having a great start. Six points already from him. Three-pointer there from McKinnis. So we're up 11-2. They answer with a three-pointer. It's out of bounds to us. Um, I'm going to motivate the team a little bit. Well, I tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to motivate Jepson. Eh, he doesn't respond. But he's having a, a good start. Hopefully... You know, he's the kind of player, if he gets hot, I think with his ratings, he could really carry this team. It's 14-7. That was a three-pointer, by the way, from Holland. But we throw it away on the other end. That was Jepson. And first foul, it's McMillian who's in there for Cunningham. Uh, Dan Gibson, probably their best player, really, overall. He draws the foul and going to the line, makes the free throw. It's now a four-point game. And a good play there from Jepson, up to eight points. 
I've been getting the rebound so far, too. I like to see that. Another three-pointer there from McKinnis. So eight points apiece from McKinnis and Jepson. It's a seven-point game, a ten-point game. Another three-pointer from Jepson this time. So um, they may be uh, competing with who's going to outscore the other. Uh, McKinnis makes the shot. I think he got the foul. That's McMillian, sorry. He uh, went to the line, missed the free throw, though. We're two for three in free throws. It's 24-16. They're shooting really well. Uh, both teams are shooting pretty good, but wow, another three-pointer. We're up by 11. Uh, McMillian called for the foul. Uh, three apiece in team fouls. I still got that intensity up more than I usually do. I usually start at about two ticks lower. <clears throat> so they're up to four team fouls now. Holland not having a great start. Um, it's an eight-point game. He misses another shot. He's like one for four, I think it showed. And they're at the line. They make them both. They do not miss at the free throw line. Um, they're just usually a, a, must be how their coaches are rated, but they have always in these playthroughs, this is what, five or six games I've played against them now, uh, they always make their free throws. So they're up to five team fouls, but we throw it away. That was Jepson. Still 11 points for him. I think he leads the team. He does lead the team. Cunningham called for a foul. That's our fifth. They missed the three-pointer. We get the rebound. It's a four-point game again. Need to convert here. And McKinnis turns it over. That's uh, four turnovers for us, two for them. Another thing about them, they usually play really, uh, really cleaner i guess they have a little bit better ball handling than we do that was a big three-pointer though from cunningham his first three points of the game a uh, great shot from mckinnis he draws the foul uh, he's going to go to the line i'm going to um i'm trying to keep these guys motivated we need we need to have just where is mckinnis here i'm going to motivate him he doesn't really respond to it, but uh, I really just hope that we have great performances from McKinnis and Jepson the rest of the way. They were the ones who were rated from our scout, our assistant coach who scouted them. Um, they were the two on our team who uh, had the advantage over Belmont. Belmont misses a free throw. They miss them both, and we get the rebound and then throw it away. Jepson, another turnover. I think that's two or three turnovers for him. So it's seven-point game, six and a half minutes left. Big three-pointer from them. If they get hot on those three-pointers, we can't stop them. They're uh, four for ten and three-pointers. Good rebound, but he can't put it put it away on that one. So we're shooting 54%. We turn it over, McKinnis. They're shooting 57, but it's it's a four-point game. They could easily get, oh, they, yeah, inside. It's a two-point game now, and we turn it over. Seven turnovers. Um, they have a chance to tie or take the lead here. And it's tied. And we throw it away. Uh, I'm going to call a timeout as soon as I can. And uh, see if I can calm them down. And I'm going to go the other way this time. I mean, entire team... I'm going to show concern. And they're showing some signs of life. But turnovers are really starting to add up now. Eight for us, just three for them. Jepson misses the shot, draws the foul. That's going to be 17 fouls on Belmont, so we're going to the line. He misses one of two. <clears throat> we get the ball back, though. Could tie it, and we do. Tie game again. Who was that? It may have been Laws off the bench. Weber misses, but draws the foul on Holland. Makes them both. It's a two-point game again. Holland cannot make it. He's one for five shooting. Big three-pointer, though, for McKinnis to answer. It's a one-point game again. They don't score. We get the rebound. McKinnis forces a three-pointer. Uh, so Olsen, um, he's going to go to the line for two. Shooting foul. Misses him. Misses one to two. It's a two-point game. Big inside play there from Mallet. Big three-pointer. We got a, the lead again. Uh, turnover. Come on. 
threw it away. 48 seconds left. We got a three-point lead. Uh, I'm going to go full court um, right now. Full court man. And pass deflected out of bounds. And it's out of bounds to us. So I can uh, go back to auto switch. 26 seconds left. I'm just going to let them run it down, see if they can get a good shot off. And they do, a little earlier than I thought. And it's a four-point lead. High-scoring game, 49-45. Uh, McKinnis, of course, uh, leading the way once again. But Jepson's still at 12 points. He's five for seven free throw, uh, field goals. Good job from him. Three three-pointers from McKinnis. But inside, we're really struggling. Um, I think Weber and Olsen are, I don't know who their inside guys are, really, to be honest. It may be even Gibson. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you here in the um, stats section. But let's see what else is going on. McMillian looking pretty good. He's had a couple of fouls, but five points, four assists. He's looked good uh, coming in to play for Cunningham. Um, six points from Marshak off the bench. Shooting, we're 54.5%, 18 for 33, but really the 9 the nine for 14 and three-pointers, that's been carrying the way. Rebounds, we've really done a good job there, 19 to 12. Um, if that can stay the same, I'll be happy, but turnovers, 9 to 4. They're shooting about the same, 54, uh, 48%, but just a few less three-pointers. That's the difference so far in the game. Uh, most of their points are coming, well, not most, but they're outscoring us in the paint. No surprise there. I'm um, I'm going to leave things as they are with the intensity up there and crashing the boards. And let's see if we can hold on to this lead. I expect this not to, uh, not to be negative, but we are, um, it, we have just a hard time. I've said it multiple times putting teams away um they have a turnover in the second half i mean we we play well one half and then um blow it in the next and it's going to be a foul on them adrian williams is third first team foul though the, uh, the half for him and jepson turns it over he even though he scored a lot he has that's probably four turnovers for him in this game so another good rebound on the area, and Edwards misses the shot, but it looks like he's going to go to the free throw line. Makes the first one, makes them both. So we're six for eight free throws. That's good. We're up by eight again. That may be one of our biggest leads. Uh, they score right away on the other end, though. Oh, good play there from Holland. Finally getting a good shot inside. Cunningham, though, called for a foul on the other end. They miss a three. We get the rebound. Holland's shooting that three again. But a good play inside from Edwards, uh, the rebound and the basket. It's five-point game. They picked up the pace a little bit. Having a hard time getting a shot off here, and Holland turns it over. Another thing to look out for, McKinnis, he has two points already in the second half, but he can, he can be streaky as well. If he has a good first half, a lot of times he has a bad second half. Um, he drew a foul on that shot, but he missed it. He's now 5 for 10 shooting. So let's just go to the free throw line here he makes both so 59 54 close game they can easily come back from this it's a three-point game now a three-pointer would be nice and that was Holland again pretty big outside shot but they hit a three and we're within two but Holland has come out on fire in the second half he makes a basket he's going to go to the line hits that up to 10 points. We're back up by five. And they miss a shot, I guess. I didn't really see what went on there. Jepson misses the shot, drew the foul. That's five team fouls on Belmont. But he misses the first, makes the second. That was his first points, I think, of the half. But it puts us back up by six. Oh, and they miss inside. Three-pointer from McKinnis puts him up to 21 points. They hit a three on the other end. Ah, and we turn it over. It's a four-point game again. 
we cannot run away from him. Cromer, though, in off the bench, draws a foul, go to the, go to the line, misses one, makes a second. Five-point game. I keep hoping we'll get a, oh, a, a miss inside and a good put up, good basket there, put us up by seven. But they're having some trouble making those inside uh, bas- whew, layups, I guess, or, or maybe dunks. Olsen misses a shot, draws a foul. I think that's going to be on is Cromer, so hopefully not too big of a deal. Just their third team foul. But I expect, no, he misses uh, one or two. Wow, some fast play. We're up by eight. I'd like us to slow it down a little bit. They throw it away. Still got the intensity up there pretty high. So 10 minutes left, an eight-point game. We're not out of the woods by any stretch. Mallet's going to get the foul. Another foul. Come on. He warns us, but that's two quick fouls in a row. They missed the three-pointer. And we make it on the other end. Ten-point lead, one of our biggest leads of the game. Eddie McKinnis draws a foul, misses a shot. Who was that? Fourth foul on Adrian Williams. McKinnis, come on, make them both. He does. He's up to 27 points. Um, he may be going for 30. I think I think his career high now is 26. So a big 12-point lead, but they get a three-pointer at the other end. It's a nine-point lead now. McKinnis misses. Good put back, though, from... Uh, I think that was Laws, and it's going to be Mike Ivory coming in right away, getting a foul. 11-point uh, game. It's too much time left, and they just school us inside there. A ah, big three-pointer from Mike Ivory. He's up to 5.6 assists this game. Good, good game from him so far. Oh, and a big three-pointer from Jepson. It's a 13-point game. And they missed a shot, and we get the foul. Uh, McMillian, his third. That's going to send him to the line. And he misses one and two. They're just eight for 13 in free throws, but we turn it over on the other end. Now it's a 10-point game, and it's going to be a foul. That's going to, I think, send McMillian to the line. He makes one, makes two, 12-point game. Man, I don't really want to touch anything right now. Um, I just want to leave it where it's at. We've The momentum has gone to Belmont for some reason, and there's going to be a foul. No, he throws, throws the pass away. So turnovers are 10 to 15. Uh, we're still more turnovers, but they've got 10, so they've had a, a pretty poor second half on that count. And who was that? McMillian, 12 points for him in this game and we get the ball back right away they couldn't score in a big three-pointer for McMillian 15 points looks like he is playing for his job next year uh, Holland's going to be called for a foul but just a second and we're up by 17 they're going to go to the line but we're looking in good shape 15 point lead four minutes left Oh, and a great play from Greg Laws. He makes the basket, draws the foul, makes the free throw. 18-point lead. We're about to score 100 points, which is really almost unheard of uh, without some OT involved. 16-point lead, three and a half minutes left. I'm about to slow it down after probably this possession. Man, we're going to have a foul on us. And luckily, they misses one of two. Oh, man, do I want to turn the, the f- I mean, 15 points, that's a lot to make up. But I don't want to send them to the line the whole rest of the game. Who's in foul trouble? Just Edward, you know, I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to leave it where it's at. I don't want to tamper with it. Um, I don't want to slow the game up too much right now. I, I think we need to score at least another couple of ball- baskets. And, yeah, we, we're going to send them to the line. They make both of them. They're 13 for 19 in free throws. But look at us, 16 for 20. That's pretty good for us. Um, they may start fouling here a little bit. If they do, I hope they're... Ah, big... We didn't need to really make that one. So, you know, now we're having trouble. I'm going to go to a stall offense. Minute 46 left. It's a 10-point game. You cannot count this team out luckily a turnover on the other end 
now they're going to start fouling us. I think that maybe Edwards going to the line. He misses the first one, makes the second one, thankfully. Uh, 100 points for us now, 189 with a minute and a half left. Uh, and they they are going to the fouls. It's a nine-point game, 24. That's going to be Cunningham. And he misses one of two. We just need to stop them here. We do. Good stop, but they get the ball right back. It's an eight-point game. Michael Hall steals the pass, calls a timeout. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna motivate the whole team. Try to. They don't, they don't listen. But <laughs> eight points. I mean, they're gonna. If they score a quick three, they're gonna foul right away. It's gonna be really hard for them, I think, to. And that's the game. Wow. Eight-point win. Great way to end the season. Did not expect this. Um, but we had some great play. I can't wait to look at the stats here. We had great bench play, um, especially from McMillian. Best game of the year for him by far. Just 11 minutes, and he scored 15. He did have three fouls, but that's okay. Four assists. Just an outstanding game for him. McKinnis didn't get to 30, but 27, I believe, is going to be his um, career high. And once again, he's player of the game. If you look at the lead changes, too, we were up as, by as much as 18. Uh, their biggest lead was four, but there were only five lead changes in this game, and that was fairly early in the game. Uh, well, they did have that run going into the end of the second half. We, we held them off, though. Really strong uh play there for for once we we were able to put them away um uh, balance play first and second half so jepson wound up with 17 a good ending for him holland played strong in the second half got picked up six rebounds cunningham five assists no points <laughs> he's never going to give us points i don't think um but then on the bench laws pretty decent game marshak even six points plus seven from him uh, ivory um Five points, but six assists. I really, really liked seeing that. We had 26 assists to their 22 on the game. We shot over 60%, 13 of 23 from three-pointers. That was the story. Um, the three-pointers, uh, even though, what, it was just three more than them. I mean, that's nine points. So you take that out of the equation, and it's a much different game. But um, points in the paint definitely went to them. No surprise. They had 21 points from Weber, you know, double-digit points from a lot of guys. I don't think we ever had a double-double this season, like points and rebounds or assists. That would be something to shoot for, I guess, maybe next year. But regardless, just being able to pick up that 15th win, I'm pretty happy with uh, that. Um, as this season went on, it just became more apparent that we're not, we're not the team this year that we were last year. So... It was always going to be, I think, a struggle for us to compete. But at, at the same time, um, finishing 500 in, in the conference um, with the way it all turned out, too. We'll look at the final standings. But there were teams here who, who played well. I didn't really expect to see them play well. Uh, but let's see. Moorhead State, Eastern Kentucky lost to Tennessee Martin. That was a big, uh, big surprise. Southeast Missouri State looks like they're going to be the regular season champs take a look at the standings here yeah they easily won 13 and 5 18 and 11 overall pretty decent year for them rpi is not really high i'm sure their out of conference schedule wasn't as strong as belmont's or, or ours but we're right in the middle of the pack with a lot of teams um eastern kentucky and belmont eastern illinois 10 and 8 nobody really ran away with the conference this year. Um, should have been ours, I guess, to win. We should have probably played a little bit better. Uh, looking at the inbox here, we have nobody declaring for the draft. We're going to be playing Moorhead State in the tournament. Um, 15 and 15, that should be a pretty good matchup. Uh, Norton Award finalists, I mean, look at that, Cincinnati, 
couple guys on there from from their team, Arizona, shooting guard from their team. Um, did that fit? We finished, yeah, we're 15 and 14. So Moorhead State, if we could somehow win this one, that would be a big win for us. Um, job security is still very good. Um, basically, from last season. No question on that, but how do we... Let me look to how, how we uh, are going to be scouted against Moorhead State. I mean, they're the one who took us to that double overtime. Yeah, they're going to have the advantage. Um, power forward and point guard. So it's, you know, it'll be shooting guards strong. It'll be Jepson and McKinnis again, probably leading the way for us with some good bench play uh, as well. I wonder if McKinnis is feeling a little bit better about us. Uh, nope. Five percent. I think he was four percent, but he's team relationships have been really well. So that's uh, that's good. He finishes the regular season sixteen point seven points. I think he's going to be the uh, leading scorer in our um, in the OVC by probably a comfortable margin. Let me see. Oh, I've seen that error a couple times, so let me I probably just clicked ahead of time. Yeah, I mean about a point better, a little over a point better than Alexander Reed, Red, who was uh, second. Assist. Cunningham finishes 4.1, tied for sixth. Ivory, though, hey, and McMillian, they're both 1.9. Rebounds, Jepson, 6.2. He's uh, seventh. Holland, five for the year. That's not too bad. I mean, Holland finishes 9.3 points, uh, five rebounds. Whew, the blocks came up a little bit. I mean, I'm just going to be interested seeing how well their ratings progress. Honestly, that's going to be the big, big question mark, and and really, it's going to tell off for for next season if this team gets better or not in ratings. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'll get ready for the um, tournament. Hopefully, we'll have a good run left. Maybe win a couple. Um, might get us enough to qualify for that NIT uh, if, if we get to the final say in the conference tournament but it's gonna it's gonna depend on the draw but at least we know we can beat belmont on the road um if they may make it to the next round in the, in the tournaments uh but that was a great way to end the regular season for sure um and as always uh, i really appreciate you guys sticking with this um playthrough i've got some good comments and feedback on it um i think i've got at least another year with austin p before i start looking at uh at other coaching opportunities, I want to, you know, my goal was to see what I could build, you know, what kind of recruits I could get. And plus I'm learning, uh, the recruiting, the recruiting has been really the biggest aspect. I think I'm falling behind on, but if we get good recruiting going, um, maybe next year will be a, a better year than this one. And we can make another tournament run again. Uh, but until then, see you next episode when we take on the, uh, Moorhead state in this OVC tournament. Thanks for watching.